I'm Jack Jordan, former superintendent of Northside School District, and we're here to interview two people that have a rich tradition of settling families of the Northside area of Bear County, but more importantly, the Northside Independent School District. Jim Ben Key is a longtime resident of Northside, went to school in the district, and Mildred Babcock, Mildred Babcock, is a longtime uh, resident of Northside, uh, and we're pleased to have both of you with us today. Thank you. Thank Jim, you. Our pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, tell us about your family as it came from Europe to Northside and where it settled in Northside. Uh, give us some things about the history of your family. Well, Mildred uh, Naglin Babcock and I are first cousins. Descendant of Alexander Binky, which uh, he emigrated to Texas in 1846 on the uh, Prince Carl Wilhelm. I'm not sure whether he docked in uh, Indianola or whether he docked in Galveston, but uh, he kind of flunked around Texas for a while and eventually joined the uh, U.S. Uh, Army in 1852 in New Orleans. And he was uh, with the Second Infantry Mounted, and when Captain John King was the commander, and John King had this uh, troop that participated in protection of the frontier from uh, San Antonio, roughly, up in the North Texas, where you had your string of forts: Fort Belknap, uh, Fort McCabot, Fort Clark. Uh, Fort Lancaster, and these forts were all put up by the U.S. Uh, Infantry and Cavalry to protection of the settlers in Texas uh, after Texas joined the Union in 1846. And from the Comanche Indians and the Apache Indians. Uh, our grandfather participated in several well-known Indian battle hostiles in uh, Del Rio. Uh, area, Bacus, I mean the Devil's River area, and around Fort McCavitt in 1852, and he eventually was discharged uh, from the uh, Second uh, Infantry Mounted uh, for not being able to do his duty because he had scurvy uh, from uh, being in the fog on hardtack without vegetables and that type of thing. Didn't seem to be too much of a disability because he eventually married and uh, they had a total of 15 children, two, two or three of them passed away, uh, two of them in infancy or, or young, youngsters. But uh, he married Eliza Smith, Schmidt, is not Smith, Schmidt, in 1857. And our grandfather, Mildred Miles' grandfather, was born in 1858. Uh, and where was he born? He was born here in, uh, at Golf Kyle Seal Parkway in 1604, where our great grandfather was buried at Kyle Seal's ranch house. That was part of the original Benke uh, Ranch. Uh, our grandfather, great grandfather, purchased 320 acres uh, very soon after marrying in 1857 and settled at that point. And our grandfather was the uh, oldest child of the 15. Uh, his name was Alex J. Binky. And Alex J. Binky eventually, his homestead is where Brandeis High School and Extension uh, Middle School is at this time. Uh, uh, that was part of the Binky homestead. Uh, I just sold my property on Bandera Road, the ranch extended all the way to Bandera Road, and it, uh, the Wanky Elementary is on part of the old Banky homestead there too. It came into the family through the Bering Connection. Uh, 
He purchased uh, different amounts of land and eventually ended up with about 16, 17 million acres of land over a period of about 20 years. So I guess he saved his money while he was in infantry because he didn't have anywhere else to spend it. So he, he bought property with it. Didn't have any vegetables anyway, did he? Yeah, he didn't have any vegetables, no. Uh, they were uh, dryland farmers and stock grazers. In, uh, in dry land farming, what were they raised? Uh, cotton, uh, feedstuffs for livestock, because uh, their living had to be made uh, raising livestock and selling it. Uh, it's said that our great grandmother, Eliza, used to take butter and eggs and sell it to uh, the residents of San Antonio at that time. In 18 57, 58, people living in a small city got their produce, produce and right. their eggs from small farmers. Small farmers. That, 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 that. Tell us about um, your growing up in this part of. Well, I was I was born in under a mesquite tree on uh, 471. Uh, you got Labor it, Road. You got it, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I think somebody's torn that tree down and built a subdivision out there now. But uh, at, at least uh, in in 1939, and uh, my dad and mom moved over to State Highway 16 or Bandera Road in 1941, and uh, got close, got part of our grandfather's property uh, uh, when that. Family started dividing up uh, the land. Uh, Alex J started with all our, our uncles. And uh, where'd you go to school? I went to school at Hallows Elementary. Um, is it at the location where it, Lotus is? is? Yes, because I started school there in 18, uh, not 18, 1945. Uh, and that school, I believe, was moved there in 1941 when they sold the. Uh, Common School District Number Two School and uh, Common School District One, I guess it was Los Reyes, and combined them and them. made the school there where Hello to Elementary is now. Yep. So there were earlier consolidations, so to speak, of those elementaries. Yes, there was. And well, what what was Hello to like at that time? Strictly a, a rural community. Uh, Have a store. Yeah, there was a. Uh, Grocery store and a Hello to the uh, Red and White store. Uh, there was a general store that uh, <clears throat> our great aunt Amalia Guger and her husband Arnold Guger built uh, on the crossing in 1870 when they got married. Uh, uh, and uh, Arnold Guger married, uh, built a, the rock house that's now known as the bike shop. And that was really the first settlement on the crossing at that point, that Hello to Creek. And you call it a crossing. Tell, tell me what the crossing meant. The crossing's on the road to Bandera and, and Bernie and, and points north. Uh, uh, sometime the road ran through Government Canyon, so uh, there was a crossing of the creek there. But uh, where old Hello to is now, uh, our great aunt and uncle built that crossing and started there, uh, the general store. We had a blacksmith shop and I understand that uh, Arnold put in a saloon, great to the disgust of my aunt, but uh, uh, they used to actually board people in their house uh, that were there on the stage. Um, they had a big pen on the west side of the road across from what is now floor store for penning livestock and moving through and um, uh, itinerant peddlers would come along and set up on the creek crossing there and sell housewares and, and that type of thing for, in the 1870s, 1880s. Jim, let, let me ask, uh, Mrs. Babcock to kind of trace her family to about the same point where she started school. Would you mind doing that sure. for us? Uh, you too. I, uh, my parents uh, married in 1924, and my father was from Rio Medina, and my mother, of course, from Pelotas. 
and uh, how, they... How had your mother, how had that, the family gotten there? Where did they come from and how did they get there? Well, basically my mother uh, IDs with my, uh, with what uh, Jim has said, that uh, she was the daughter of Alexander and Elisa okay. Schmidt and, uh, Benke. Okay, so that's... And, and her mother, uh, my grandmother, was a Beering. Beering. And of course the Beerings uh, had property, Pelotas, and um, um, a large land owners. And where, where had they come from to come to Texas? Oh, I have they, to refer they to They came Jim. from Saxony. Saxony. Yeah, they came from Saxony. I, I interrupted you, so let's oh, go, go anyway, back. Oh, anyway. Uh, the, uh, I think, I mean, recalling conversation, uh, when the children in married, they got a, a chunk of land to build a house or do what they needed to do. And uh, so the land from Bandera Road to where my parents, uh, my grandparents lived, was kind of in the center of the property between Bandera and Hausman Road. Bandera and Hausman, okay. And so you wonder, why is the house, you know, a mile from the road? But... Uh, why was it? Well, they combined their inheritance, I think, my grandmother mm -hmm. and my grandfather, and they built a house, you know, in the middle of property. Or, or, Not a bad idea. Or, no, it was a good idea. <laughs> And uh, so all the fa you know, they resided there uh, majority of their lives until they got to the point where they were unable to do for themselves. But anyway, in the meantime, my parents had married and uh, decided to rent the property that my uncle, uh, my mother's oldest brother, owned which was College Park. And Where College Park is. To exactly. And there was a house there and all. So they uh, rented that property. In the meantime, he had married uh, my Aunt Piercy, which was a Michelson, and had property from her dowry on Babcock and Dezavala, on that kind of corner there. And so he said, well, I don't have a need for the you know, the, the house that you're in and I think I'm gonna sell it, you know. So they had to scramble, you know. They'll, I'll buy it, you know. And they bought that, the property there on, uh, we always called the other place, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, lived there. Uh, but since my m mother was an only daughter, my grandmother was cantankerous and she, would tell the uh, household help when she was alone. Because my grandfather lived with my uncle George and uh, she uh, would say, well, I, I can do for myself. You can, you can go to your house, you know. Or she'd send the housekeeper to walk from where my parents, my grandmother lived to the other place on the hill called yeah, my mother. That. That was at least, uh, oh, it was a good two miles. Two miles, that's what it was. And uh, so this went on, I can remember as growing up, you know. And you were born child. where? I was a, a cesarean section child and born in the Piet Nass Hospital downtown. Oh, really? I was number two, but my oldest sister was born at the home, you know, with the midwife on the other place, <laughs> College Park. But anyway, it was finally my parents said, it's no sense in you all walking back and forth. We'll just move in with grandma, you know. I mean, she was forever sending my ass people. So that's, that was when I remember moving in with my grandmother uh, and uh, my grand, uh, my mother, of course, you know, was the character met her needs and so forth and she was she knew how to <laughs> manipulate her her uh, daughter I guess you might say but anyway she passed away at when I was about 13. Where did you start school? Lock Hill. 
Black Hill. Black Hill. And that I, was long. I started at Black Hill. How'd you Hill. get there? Oh, we rode the bus. Uh, we rode the bus and, and, and we would walk. Uh, as, you know, we, the neighbors, like the Gobbitses and uh, my cousins, uh, Sam and Annie Banky's two children, Verna Bell and Rain, we would have to come to a common place to a be picked stop. up. <laughs> you did, they didn't stop at your <laughs> gate. Stop and honk and <laughs> right. wait for you. So we rode the bus and we, and we walked. As I, oh, when it was time to catch the bus for high school, we'd walk across the path to the Igos, John. Mm -hmm. And then we'd walk together to the end of Waller Road and we'd pick up Bertabelle and Raymond, and then we'd walk to the corner of uh, Babcock and Hausman, which is about two miles, and we'd catch the bus about 7.15, 7.30, and we only get a ride if it was the weather was bad, you know, or something, and then uh, somehow my, our, I can remember my dad taking me, you know, or building a fire for us to keep warm. There at the bus stop. At the bus stop. <laughs> And Mr. Fox, we could hear him whistle before we even heard the bus <laughs> coming down the hill. And, and uh, Johnny and Totsy Gobbitz lived just uh, not too far from that intersection. And uh, they would walk down and we'd all board the bus and then we'd tootle into, the, you know, the city. And the bus driver, uh, Mr. Fox, would drop us off at uh, Edison, and then those that had chosen Jefferson would drop us off and come back and pick us up Bring in the home. evening. Back to the bus stop. Back to the bus. Well, let, let's go back, um, Jim, to growing up there in Helotus and uh, kind of take us through your, your school years, uh, Helotus. Okay. Where you went after that? <clears throat> of course, I, I attended six grades in Hellos. Uh, I remember the first year, uh, and you had a question, what, what did we do for lunch? Well, you, you brought lunch that you didn't eat. There wasn't and, any fruit? Uh, no, it wasn't free any. Lunch no program. free lunch programs, no, uh, no cafeterias. A uh, whole hot belly wooden stove and the two-room schoolhouse. Uh, uh, in fact, I can remember Crisco used to be a little lard can, about uh, maybe two quarts size with a little lid and a handle. That's what mother packed my lunch in, be hard ring sausage and bread and butter. And the Hispanic people, they always had their little paper bag and they would bring their tortillas and mean, uh, tacos. And that was a great thing to trade, sausage yeah. food. <laughs> Bean taco, <laughs> but those guys were always so frugal like us too. They'd take the paper back up carefully and put it in their pockets so that they could use, carry the, the, use that same paper bag for months at a time. Who, who were some of your classmates? Uh, Jesse, I guess, were Reuben Lee, uh, Ellen Buell, uh, uh, Miss Schott, uh, Betty Lou Schott, Ron Haby. I guess Jesse Augusta, uh, uh, the Madela brothers, Jesse and, and Felix, uh, Frank's younger brothers, uh -huh. uh, uh, Bernard Shelton. Uh, and we went to school together for about six years there and then uh, moved on to Leon Valley where I went to the seventh grade where uh, <coughs> they put an old barracks for the seventh graders out, outside. And while Bill Cody, one of your superintendents, was uh, teaching school there. Right. right. Uh, and in the eighth grade, uh, we moved over to the. No, I attended the eighth grade there too. They didn't build the. What was part of John Marshall now was. They built what was a junior high onto the high school. Adjacent building. to it, that's right. right. Virtually and, connected to it. Yes, it was. Uh, and then in high school there at uh, John Marshall through when I graduated in 57. But I remember very clearly as a youngster in the fourth or fifth grade, Dr. W.G. Burke, who 
and a little veterinary clinic right there at French Creek. Uh, picked me up one time and we went riding. I don't know what I was doing with him, but he pulled in on what's now Lobo Lane and says, that's where you're going to high school. And he never been open pit. I said, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Whatever you say. Bro. Whatever you say. And yes, he was right. Uh, yeah, they they grew together. They grew together. The Haggards and some other folks That's and right. donated the land for First Northside School. High School. That's, That's right. right. Uh, Dr. Burke and Clarence Gollum and several other folks got together and <clears throat> really pushed the common school districts of uh, Maverick and Lock Hill and Hill Lotus and Clifton and Leon Springs and gosh I know enough one or two other little yeah. schools they, out there. They pushed. First the of all, so maybe you left Clabra. Yeah, Clabra was part of it. Uh, I think you covered them all. Leon Valley, Maverick. There was a Maverick out there I too. I uh, don't remember that. I think that was part of it. But they were they put together all the little common elementary school districts and made a rural independent high school district. It was Northside Independent. Rural high school, and, and I've heard, you know, about Mr. Gom and uh, others, you know, joining together and to push for this consolidation. See, he's a relative. And Clarence. Clarence. Yes. And I also have heard from people that I've interviewed here for him that uh, John Flora did a lot. John Flora to, did, yes. To uh, push the consolidation. John he wanted good education. Yes, John T. Floor was uh, a member, a really member of the Hello to Slimes Club, which started in 1950, okay. which was about the time that push started. W.Z. Burke was a member of that. Uh, Father Robbie, Rabe, we called him, was president of St. Mary's University. He started the Catholic Church out there, was in that Lions Club. Uh, they were just an illustrious group of guys that got together and were really a big part of. Uh, uh, Mr. Gollum was the club, and they really got together and put the push behind consolidating the school district. Well, you mentioned, you know, just some real names, Dr. Burke, uh, the Remka store. Yeah. And there was a store across uh, Bandura at one time. Mossburgers was called Mossburgers, but see, that, that was our great aunt original store, Amalia Googer, that was built in the 70s. And they were, Arnold and Amalia Googer were the first postmasters at that location, the Hello Postmasters. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Maisky Service Station. Maisky Service, Service Station, right. And Wolf Sausage Shop. Wolf where was Sausage. that located? Uh, well, it's uh, right where um, the Hebner and uh, Bandera come together. Right there on that corner where that uh, Pantry, uh, little petrol pantry. Petrol pantry. Yeah. Okay, right there. Right there. Yeah. Uh, she had lost her husband uh, with two young girls, and she was widowed and had no other way to make a living. So she made a silk purse out of a sow's ear. She started making country sausage and had a pretty, pretty good business. She made it year round. So well, tell us about some of the farms and maybe. What some of the folks did. I, I know you mentioned uh, the bronze. Uh, tell us about some of these families. You mentioned well, the Goms and the Bearings. All of those folks were either they did a little dry land farming, uh, raised livestock feed, or uh, in some cases they even years ago raised uh, cotton. Uh, and they had dairy farms started up. Uh, this was at that area, the Lotus area had a bunch of dairy farms. Uh, and the name of some of the people? That well, the Stevens and the, uh, the uh, Krugers and uh, the Binkies farms. Uh, Wouldn't you include the Evans? Yeah, Evans? yeah. Newt Evans uh, and, and Hell Lotus area right there uh, where Evans Valley is now. Uh, he, he had a dairy farm. Uh, the Broccoli's had a dairy farm. Broccoli? Yes. Well, uh, Dr. Nixon. And Dr. Nixon had a, a P.I. Nixon was a, a uh, physician uh, 
kind of a pioneer physician. Early 1900s uh, uh, there, he had a big farm on the corner of Brown Road in uh, Pandora. Called, of all things, he had a big sign, Fairyland Hills, because he was a great Irishman and believed in fairy. <laughs> but, uh, where, had, where'd they take the milk? Uh, there was a place called Knowlton's Creamery on Fredericksburg Road. So that's, that's where they... Right. And did they take it in the... Old cans? Of yes, and 10 gallon milk cans. Uh, uh, we would milk the cows and have coolers to set the milk in. And uh, Emma Borman's crew would buy with a flatbed truck and pick up the milk and take it to the creamery. Uh, everybody's can was marked, so nobody ever questioned whether you got paid for the right amount or not. Uh, and the Knowlton's had quite a bit to say about uh, the North Side. Yes, District. absolutely. Oh, yes. absolutely. Ed Nolton and Lloyd Nolton sure did. And, uh, I went to school with Jimmy Nolton, or one of the Nolton boys, and we used to participate in FFA judging contests. And one of the favorite things was to sneak out of school and go practice our dairy skills judging. At you, the you had to get assignments, school. You know. That's right. You didn't sneak out of school. You just got we got assignments, assignments, but really we went there to eat a lot of ice cream. Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mildred, tell us about the conditions of roads in that area. Uh, what what well, were Bandera Road and Leslie and all of them? I remember housing being gravel, you know. It was all gravel and the, you wouldn't, I mean, once in a while you'd see a car, you know what I mean? It was rare. And South Housing was all dirt. dirt. I mean, and there were people that would not realize they could duck in this mud, you know, when it rained good and uh, had to be pulled out. But uh, uh, Hausman was gravel. And the funny, th uh, just an interesting side story. When we were kids and we had to, you know, walk and you think of safety today with children. And uh, at the time, uh, we were still living where College Park is, and so on the bend, getting off the bus at the Hausman and Babcock and walking uh, where our gate was to the land, there was this, out, out of the movies, you know, they were probably, uh, had this uh, Panama hat, you know, uh -huh. the, I mean, they probably were gangsters or something, and they were driving this big cream-colored vehicle at the time, mind you, I must have been about six or seven, and they stopped, and it was a beautiful lady, you know, and this kind of uh, guy that you'd pick in the movie, and they stopped and said, can we give you children a ride, you know, we can give you a ride, you know, and we, oh, no, we you, live right here. Don't you ride with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> we live right here. And then they said, oh, you know, they were kind of jolly and laughed and got, got in the car and drove off and that was our, our interesting experience with the outside world. But uh, there was a, a gravel road and that was at the time even when we get to the Ewalls, it was, uh, it was all gravel. Well, what, what was Bandera Road at that time? Where it is, uh, well, where now, I'm trying to think, South Housen intersected Bandera Road. But Bandera Road was uh, paved, hey, I was, think. Was it yes, too late it was, yeah. Yes, because uh, sometimes after I was gotten out of high school and was going into nursing school, at the time was Baptist Memorial, mm -hmm. uh, in order to come home, I would catch the Kerrville bus and for a quarter. You know, walk That's to big the big money. <laughs> walk to the <laughs> bus station, ride the bus, and get off at South Hausman, and then walk. You know, where's the bus? Uh, this Kerrville bus at the bus station downtown. Down Mary Street. So you had to go downtown. Well, I was in nursing school at the oh, time. Oh, at that time, right? And we had lived in the nurses' residence, but okay. nobody had a car. I mean, we were lucky to have. 
you know, pocket change for uh, whatever toilet <laughs> articles. But I remember uh, walking, you know, to the Kerrville Bus Company there on uh, Pecan and St. Mary's. There. Right. And catch the bus and rest for a quarter out and get off and walk home, you know, if I. Tell, tell us about the Lock Hill Elementary as you remember it. Gosh. Now well, you were talking we, about a pot belly stove. Yeah, we now, had, had Mr. A, Levy was the. Uh, Fritz Levy? Uh, he yeah. was the custodian, and they, I mean, he was a bus driver too. Exactly and my uh, first was exactly grade teacher was Miss Hollis, and uh, they uh, I think she taught two grades. And then there was Ann Johnson that had third grade, and Mr. Johnson was just part of the faculty. I mean, even though he was into insurance and stuff, but he <laughs> he knew all of the parents and all. I mean, he was a great guy. And then Miss Seen was a teacher in fifth grade, and we were relegated to the uh, separate building. But those were wooden buildings. To the north of the brick building and the, let's see, I think it was kind of behind the auditorium. And uh, we really felt like we were really gifted up in life when we were in the brick building, when the 7th and 8th grade and the ninth and 10th grade. How did they eat those uh, classrooms? Well, you know, they, the teacher would address and take care of the 7th, the one grade, whatever it was, and then when the teacher was occupied with the other grade, hmm. then you would be doing something that you would be busy being assigned. And the other big thing in the school, we had competition, you know, challenge athletics. We would play volleyball or baseball, you know, during recess. Uh, the yes. big competitor was Calabra, Mr. Lane. I mean, he fielded, I mean, his players he were... He made it professional, huh? Oh, I mean, they were just, that was a little bitty school, but I mean, it was like going against the Super Bowl. But well, when you got into the auditorium, which, uh, that that had a fireplace in it. That had a big fireplace in it. Huge fireplace. And, uh, a beautiful building. And it would be full. I can remember as a kid, I mean, you know, if there were a PTA meeting, as limited as transportation was, you know, and so forth, the parents would all turn out. It was very important. And the teachers were uh, gods, you might say. Well, you people wanted not, an education. They wanted the, I mean, you didn't, you would never dream of going home and saying don't, something. Don't challenge that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, well, you must have been wrong. Now again, but, tell, tell me how you got to Lock Hill. Uh, by bus. By bus, and you came yeah. from uh, a school kind of a bus, bus stop by a school bus. And it was a kind of a uh, your the bus would have a stop that would be a kind of community stop. Right, community uh, stop. Maybe there were yeah. six, eight, ten kids. And what roads did you use to get to Lock Hill? Oh, it was uh, Hausman and uh, Babcock, and if it rained and the Leon Creek was up, then the, they'd have to go way above on Harmon Road, wow. on Babcock, way above, way. And, and be able to get the kids back get home and, on and a Fredericksburg rainy. Fredericksburg Road was paved then. Freddy, Fredericksburg Road was paved. I wish I could tell you exactly how, but anyway, it. Uh, but these were all gravel roads. Anyway. Who were some of your classmates at Lockheed? Ooh, Betty and Marie Cobb, and uh, of course my my cousin Raymond Binky and uh, Alvarez was some of the Hispanic uh, children that. Their parents worked at the Rock Quarry. Hmm. That was another stop. Children now, now at the Rock was, Quarry. Where was the Rock Quarry? 
where Fiesta Texas is okay. now. We're six. They call McDonough Brothers. McDonough Brothers. And yeah, was, that's right. And it McDonough. was on that side of Fredericksburg. It was on the uh, west yeah. side of west side. Fred Fredericksburg Road. Um, let's see, Mary Elizabeth Uhl. Uh Jimmy. Uh, what in the world? Was Any boat? Uh, who? Boat, Dick Boat. Uh uh. Dick, the, the uh, you know, yeah, the, the mechanic. Yeah, the garage. There. Yeah, the mechanic. In, in fact, uh, when you think of mechanics, uh, they had a lovely article in the paper about the Andersons. And I can remember Gloria saying that she said, oh, you know, they'd use the bus and the tires until it, they maxed out. And she said, We'd pray every time Eddie would check the bus out, you know, and say, well, can we keep those tires on, you know, and pray that they would hold up. Well, that's true, because you had Eddie Anderson working on here, and you had Mr. Bo. He was there. Yeah. Working them over there. And they were fantastic. Uh, tell me what you did after high school. What I did after you, high school? You graduated from high school in 57. <clears throat> I went in the Air Force for reserve for a short period of time and came back and married by the time I was 20. By the time I was 23, I had three children. And I was working a dead-end job and decided I better do something about that, so I started going to school at San Antonio College and worked my way up until I eventually got a degree. Uh, I found out pretty quick that uh, uh, <coughs> I had done well in high school, but not well enough to make a, a, a good living, and I needed an education. So uh, the only the only thing that I had any affinity for in high school was chemistry. And Mr. Heskey taught that class. Marvin Heskey. Marvin Heskey. And uh, I managed to pass that. Drug a couple of. Uh, international uh, uh, scholastic group uh -huh. kids with me uh, but that wasn't because I was smart it's just because I, that just happened to be something that I liked. Uh, math wasn't too good for me. Miss Tally used to come by and whack me over the head with a ruler all the time. But she was a good teacher. <laughs> yes she was. Artem Tally, Miss Taylor, Miss Wynn. Uh, there was Ice a... Taylor. Yep. Miss Taylor, she loved Texas history. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, and from there, I went to work for city public service for 37 years. Uh, and retired from there in February 1997. Well, tell, tell me about, you know, we talked about Medicare. Uh, certainly, Dr. Dr. Burke took care of the uh, animal. animal. Uh, you mentioned Dr. Ben Drybo. Uh, tell me about. Well, Ben Drybo practiced in San Antonio, but he lived in a ranch acres in Hell Lotus. And corner, uh, Mr. Perrigan had a little building there that's still there that the man would uh, hold office uh, twice a week uh, for the people so they wouldn't have to drive all the way in San Antonio for their doctor's visits. Uh, unfortunately, he died in a car accident on Bandera Road uh, in the late 50s, I think. Um, you, you mentioned uh, a number of things. Uh, Ellen Hart? Ellen Hart was an elementary school teacher and principal at Hello to Elementary when I went to school there. Uh, she had a beautiful singing voice, played the piano well. Uh, had long black hair, uh, what I remember These about boys her. remember those things. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and then uh, my fifth and sixth grade principal was Walter Tice, uh, right. a young man that um, he and his wife was a school teacher also. And uh, they lived in San Antonio and drove the hell out of us every day to the elementary school. Uh, and that's how I got to school in the fifth and sixth grades, because uh, he'd stop and pick me up, provided I would lock on time. So. 
<laughs> and your father was on the a Lotus Common School Board. Uh, yes. Along with Clarence Gollum, who never had any children of his own, and Rudolph Baring, who never had any children of his own. There were, there were some people out there that were very much pro-education that didn't have children. Oh, I think so. And they were movers and shakers uh, in the Common School District. And I think that's the school important, district. too. The, the thirst for education that came out of the community and then the individuals who really pushed for it, and some of which uh, saw it as just advancing yeah. their, their society, their area, what have you. And it wasn't about their kids. They were interested in other They were interested in the community, right. I think so, because uh, that's why I say I, it, it's a very suitable uh, memorial, you might say, to the people because they, under great uh, odds, did they provide as best they could for the children, encouraging neighbors, encouraging neighbors, children, uh, to go forth, you know, and, and the, the importance of education. Oh, there, there was a collective common need with people building their own schools virtually. That's right. On their own property. That's right. So kids could go to school. And yes. And yeah. Texas and, and has over over time changed many of the things for the better. But at that time, it's pretty much, you better do it yourself Well, and get a little help. The only thing that Texas had to uh, help the uh, schools was a county superintendent, uh, Clyde Smith. Clyde Smith was, was the one. He, was, he helped coordinate the common school. That's right. And there was some state funding uh, for textbooks and things like that, but that, yeah, uh, it was up to the local community. There was a lot of sacrifices made by families That's to, right. to make sure their kids got an education. Um, That's what's so fantastic in looking back, you know, and appreciative of our ancestors. What they, what they did yes. for you and for others in their community. Yes, that's right. and, uh, that's, unselfishly. That, that's right. There weren't selfish motives. They wanted uh -uh. their kids to do Absolutely. well. Uh, Absolutely. Tell us about it. After you finished up at Lock Hill, what grade were you in when you finished Lock Hill? Well, I attended, uh, uh, went to Edison. Okay. And, and when, uh, when did you finish? I was 10th grade. 10th uh, uh, okay. on to Edison and uh, graduated from Edison and uh, Actually, the superintendent, I can't even, I can't recall his name at the time, but the sec I was taking a secretarial type of course in high school, and Ms. Foster said, well, there'll be an opening, you know, to be secretary, you know. Who was Ms. Foster? She was my secretarial teacher okay. in, what, in Edison. In Ed what was her name? Rosalie Foster. Rosalie Foster. And uh, they also had offered one, uh, Christmas semester nursing uh, arts course, and perhaps because my mother took care of my grandmother, so that interested me. And so I decided, uh, no, I think I'll go to, you know, I want to go to nursing school. And I applied, you know, like young people do, all these different places, and one was Scott and White and Temple, you know, it, it provided a stipend. Yeah, it had quite a name. And, yes, and uh, I told my mother, and the next day she said, your father says, that's too far away. <laughs> oh, that was devastating, you know, you thought your world had come to an end. And then, uh, anyway, I went, it, it, uh, at the time it was uh, M&S Hospital was still in existence. Yeah, it's now Nursing a hotel, school. isn't it? Okay. No, it's, uh, it's still a hospital. Still Baptist a hospital. purchased all okay. that property. but. Uh, was it across the street from Baptist? Uh, well, it it was Dallas. On Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I uh, applied. You know, my father said, "Well, you know, we'll figure out a way." You know, because the tuition not as, was not very. That's not as far as Temple. <laughs> right. 
And I was, I mean, I, I had a wonderful three years there. We spent three years there, lived in the nursing home, you know, and, and everybody was in the same boat. <laughs> the nurses resident, not nursing home. Nurse, yeah. <laughs> nurse, there you go. Uh, nursing, nurses residents, and you know, our, we just uh, together and work together so, six days a week. What did you do after finishing up nursing school? I went to work at, in the operating room at Nick's Hospital. Because wow. uh, my nursing arts teacher, uh, Helen Bernhardt, suggested that, you know, see something else, do, go someplace else. And uh, in the meantime, of course, I'd met my husband uh, and uh, he was saying, well, I'm going to be transferred, you know, and all this. And, and I, my, in my mind, I wanted to join the Navy Nurse Corps. But instead, I got married in uh, 1950 and uh, had graduated in August of 1950. And, uh, and your we, husband was in the service? Was in the military. And he was, uh, and in January, he was transferred uh, to New York State. And uh, we got married in December and uh, we left with <laughs> left Texas with very little and uh, spent uh, moving every two years. Tell, tell us anything about your family that we haven't covered. I just thought great grandpa, our great grandfather Alexander Benko or B E N K O with a new lot pronounced Benke. That's how it came, B-E-N-K-E. -E. Supposedly spoke seven languages and had been in the military in uh, the Austro-Hungarian army. Uh, he was a subject of the Habsburg Emperor and supposedly he left there at a young age to get away because all they were doing was fighting over there and he went to travel the world and got off the ship and came to see the Alamo Captain King come along and decided that he looked like he had some military bearing. And, which he did. Which he did. And talked to him. He said, you want a nice horse? <laughs> Got him into the infantry and fighting Indians. But um, I think he would be very proud of uh, his great, great, great grandkids. You know. You know. Uh, and and uh, there must be 500 or so of them, at least. And so many of them still... Yeah. Have roots. They still have roots. And uh, this part of this part. Uh, it, my daddy always told me, don't ever talk about anybody in the area because they might be your first or second cousin. Yeah, the Gollums and the Browns and the Stubings and the. Yeah, we're related to the Browns too. Yeah. And See, our our grandmother Eliza Bering. Uh, and a sister married and married uh, the Gollum, Samuel. first Gollum, Samuel mm -hmm. Gollum. Uh, Amalia married William Brown. But the, the roots that they put down are still evident. Yes. The strength that they put into this area is still evident. And we yes. grow and grow. We, we, the district is building on the roots that they put down. The yes. fiber and strength right. of those people. Yes, yes. Ms. Babcock, it's been our pleasure to oh, visit with also. you. Oh, thank you for Jim, listening. Nice.